everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, anabolicdoc.com and metabolicdoc.com, both of which you can pick up this amazing book, America on Steroids, A Time to Heal. And uh, Doctor, who, who's joining uh, joining you today? I see a canine. This is Dr. Victor. <laughs> okay, is he a veterinarian? What is he? He's a veterinarian in training. Is that the uh, the poodle that does all the adventure stuff with you? Yes, it is. That's the mountain bike dog poodle. So, the dog's in better shape than I am. I'll tell you that. I'm not sure about that, but he could run. He could run faster. That's for damn sure. Uh, I'm not going on any, any mountain trails with you guys. Forget it. So yeah, you missed uh, you missed the Arnold Classic. It was how was? It? It was a lot of humanity. A lot of uh, a lot of people. Uh, a lot of great physiques. I always say to people, if you think. You've seen a lot of great bodies. You've got to go to the Arnold Classic Expo and just walk around for a couple hours. People you've never heard of, you're never going to hear of. They're just they're phenomenal physiques, men and women. So every time you think you saw the best built person ever, you turn around, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. But yeah, noisy, uh, exciting. Uh, you would have enjoyed the strong man, I think, a lot. The strong man yeah. finals. I heard about, I heard my boy, oh my God, Brian Shaw tore his, his hamstring. Yeah, I think a couple of the guys, a couple of guys, they all, every year at least a couple of guys tear something in the course of that uh, of that event. Oh, but oh, no joke. The last event that they do live on stage Saturday night, uh, in between the bodybuilding finals and everything, was uh, they had this stone. It was irregularly shaped. It was like oblong, and it was 410 pounds, and they had to pick it up and get it up on one shoulder. A 410-pound rock, and uh, not once but twice when they dropped it, it bounced and fell off the stage, like toward the front row. Like, <laughs> I think Arnold just almost got nailed. Everybody like jumped back, and there was nowhere to go. It was pretty scary. <laughs> it's unreal. Imagine dropping on your foot. Oh my lord! A uh, few of the guys tried to do it, and they couldn't. Uh, they couldn't move. They couldn't get it off the ground, which is understandable because I think a lot of them were injured already from. You know, there are various other events they had to do that weekend. Uh, and that powerlifting, you know, there's uh, 80, 80 sports going on. Wow. 22,000 athletes, 200,000 people all together come to Columbus for that. So it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, we'll catch you at the Olympia, right? Yeah, I got to get out there. We're just, unfortunately, I'm just, you know, suffering from doing what I love to do. And we're just, we're... Just so many, so much going on, Ron. I'm so happy. We were in Florida, yep. and we're just, you know, we're just taking in. Actually, I'm taking one or two consoles a day now, and they, those guys come and they see me on the Skype, on the Zoom, and then they end up coming to see me if they do. But we're doing consults uh, all over the world, and men are joining that decide that they want to indeed. I start off with the hour consult, Again, Zoom, Skype, uh, FaceTime, even sometimes just phone calls all over the world, mainly America, yeah, Canada. Yeah. And then if they, if we decide that they indeed, you know, have something that's treatable, like you know they've been on steroids and they they're hurt or they want to come off or they actually come see me, and that's why we have Florida and Connecticut. And I'm in the I'm in the process right now of trying to uh, get a franchise and expand my services. Yep. It's going to happen. We got some, got some capital, so we're going forward. But I'm doing it in a slow fashion because I'm going to open up the first legitimate men's health clinic uh, focusing on men and obviously testosterone and cleaning up the steroid use, but just men yeah. and, um, and cardiovascular prevention uh, in the country. And I have doctors calling now, so I, we got there. We're there. Well, where's that, that going to be? So we're going to get, we're probably going to, I, I'm not going to hire doctors in the, and then work in my clinics, which there are Connecticut currently and Florida. Yeah. The plan is probably, although we're working out some of the details right now, but I can't take, I, I'm at the end of where I can't, I'm still taking patients, guys. Don't get nervous. Mm. <laughs> my patients that are, my patients that are underneath my care are number one. Right. Obviously I have a lot and I have more and more we have i have a waiting list now that it can go out to sometimes three weeks or so i mean it just it is where it is and some men don't rejoin really? so i have i have turned it well annually guys come for one year at a time and it's an annual contract membership they do and i do our consults all every day i do i did three today 
So I'm, I'm working about 12 hours a day, but it's not work. It doesn't seem like it's work. That's so five days a week, right? Five days a week, okay. that's, that's, Monday, that's and, then, and then Saturday and Sunday, I'm obviously doing my writing and I'm filming. We have a big, we have, I'll let you know at the end what we're doing this Monday. We, we're filming something cool. And then I'm, I'm working and spending time and training. And I, I people ask me, Doc, how, how many hours a, a day do you work? Well, I go, well, I don't see it that way. Mm. I sleep about five or six hours a night. Uh, and apart from that, I work. But it's, but it's not work, Ron. It's not work. Because yeah. this is not work. This is this is. I my, I just saw a patient that came in, a new guy, coming off steroids for about two or three years. I'm helping him, and it's just another guy. So it's not work. That's fun. Work is paying my bills, managing the people. You know, complaining and yelling at people because for this and for that, with the bullshit. And the, I'm pretty good at. It, I found. I didn't think I'd be good. I guess I'm an Irish Jewish guy, so I'm pretty good at the business. So we got some. Money, we got some money coming. And we're going to have five centers around the United States where doctors, I'm going to train the doctors my seek, my trade secrets. Yep. And then they're going to be affiliates of Metabolic Doc, Men's Health America. Mm. It's going to be a new company. And they're going to work. I'm going to send them the leads. And then these doctors are going to be my affiliates. And they're going to practice medicine the way I do all around the country, probably the first place is going to be probably Las Vegas, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, maybe L.A., Chicago, and one in Tampa. Wow. And there you, go. and there you go. And you just had the one-year anniversary for the, uh, is it Fort Lauderdale office? God, yeah. So Fort Lauderdale one-year, no, one-year anniversary that I that I went down there to get the real estate. Oh, okay. The the, the the anniversary, a year ago we went down there and we and we were looking for real estate. Uh, and then we 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 secured the real estate and we built out a little bit inside. We opened the office for the first patient in July 2018. Okay. So that will be the real annual. And every time I go down there now, Ron, I mean, it's just insane. We got the Cuban connection going on down there. Oh yeah. <laughs> not a joke, and not I want to tell you that because of your, the Cuban missile. So and Ron, it's. Men want medical support. Yeah, yeah, they're all on testosterone or steroids. There's millions upon millions of men that want to come out from the from under whatever they are, and they don't they don't feel comfortable with the primary care. They don't feel comfortable with the anti aging place anymore either. Hmm. Really? So, hmm. why should they? They don't monitor them. No, I mean you know not everybody would realize that that's a. Uh... That's doing them a disservice. A lot of people would. But there, so a lot of guys actually do. But I, I, you know, I don't want to argue. But they come to me, and they're it's pathetic. And I'm seeing medical disease, some of it's not reversible. Wow. From anti-aging places. Okay, well, but you, I got to get into it because I don't. I stole all your videos for like six weeks straight. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about this. Uh, I wanted to get to some questions. These are mostly left as comments and questions on your YouTube videos. And some of the videos that we've done together, and one of them is just like a big rant against both of us. But I'll get to that in a moment. Oh, I saw uh, that. That's the fun one, I think. I, 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 I kind of have fun with those. But uh, a gentleman named DigiClear 30, 30, 33, 32, two days ago said, "Doctor, will you please talk about the recent belief of not using AIs anymore, letting estrogen run free on TRT? Many channels are talking about this now. How they're terrible for your bone health and other factors because a lot of these anti-aging places." automatically prescribe you an AI along with your testosterone and whatever other drugs they're giving you. There you go. A Remedex or whatever. Here we, so here we go. And that's it, Ron. So that's an interesting segue into it. So men are on testosterone, and then the the thought was, it, there's no data. It, it just kind of evolved over the, over the years that men that are steroid using, men that are just taking testosterone, Maybe they don't consider it steroids, more TRT, but they're kind of, they're not with, with doctors. And then you have anti-aging oh, for now, at least for 10 years, if not even maybe 15 years with the death of John Chrysler, who's the first guy really to, I think, do this back in 2001. I remember John Chrysler before he died, obviously he just died last, you know, two months ago, but, but he was one of the first guys to start. And again, balancing in theory, balancing testosterone, estrogen, everyone Great idea. How do you do it? You're taking an aromatizable steroid. Do we agree on that? Yes. It's testosterone. It aromatizes. Yes. 
not to mention you're taking other drugs that may aromatize directly or may lead to further aromatization of testosterone you're taking. So that's test DECA, test Anivar, test Winstrol, test De blah, 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 blah. Right. And, and Llewellyn taught me many, many years ago that he said, Doc, it's not just the aromatizable steroid. When you take a non-aromatizable steroid, it will have effects on the aromatizable steroid. So that drug may not aromatize, but it will cause the other drug to aromatize more. Brilliant. Wow. So, and then, and then you have men that have different genetics and weight and, and other medical issues, and they hold water differently. The guy I saw today was leaner than lean. His skin, you know, the face was just like, like paper, just genetics. Wow. And, and, and he's on testosterone. It's like he goes, he goes yeah, I, eat, I can eat pizzas and this. I hate him already. Ron, you know it's true. So when you take testosterone, it aromatizes. If you measure it, which I do all the time, and I give men the opportunity to look at it, it's to a greater extent going to aromatize. What do you, there's no trade secrets or numbers where you have to get it under. That, then it goes into this whole world of incredible, where I'm humble, that patients, men, and, and certain online experts and guys, which they, they talk about it, balancing it. And the only way to balance is three ways to balance it. Change the dose of the testosterone ester by microdosing. Let's just go right to the money, right? Microdosing. So smaller that's, doses spread further apart will... Well, well, no, well, no, smaller doses closer together. Okay. Closer so, together. So, so, so like daily dose. So little teeny, teeny doses every day versus not, so they're not spread apart. When you're spread apart, you take a, that's a bolus. You give a big, and then it, it, because you give such a big dose, it's relative, but okay. a, a CC every week, a half a CC every three or four days, that even that small half a CC will be a certain amount that it will start to, to go into the circulation and it will overload and it will just, it will, it's going to aromatize to, for, to based on your genetics, who you are, what time you want, what time. So you aromatize and if we, we see, this is true, that if you take teeny, teeny doses yet you do them daily, you definitely get less aromatization. I, but there's a sweet spot. Sometimes it's every day, every other day. I've seen it because I told you I have a couple guys that have heart attacks. They were on steroids. They can't be on HD. They can't. They have low HDLs. Me and the cardiology doctors are like, please take some testosterone, but please don't use aromatase inhibitors anymore because it's going to take your already naturally low HDL and lower it further. You're, come on. Yeah. So, but then the guy says to me, this is years ago. The guy says to me, he's still a patient. He said, Doc, I, I have an idea. Uh, why don't I, I can't use Arimidex anymore, but I, I don't want to have those high estrogen levels because it really it, it, it hurts my brain, my gonical mass. Oh, okay. I, I'm not disagreeing with anyone. So what can we do? Let's try point one every other day. Every so this man did it. It works. And he's been with, three years. He's with me. I just talked to him last. I don't know last month. He's doing great. His HDL is as high as it's ever been. It's still under forty because he's on testosterone. Yeah. But it's it's okay. His LDL is like in the fifties, which is it's great because but he's on statins. Right. So oh, actually no, we just put him. We and the cardiology guy, we just put him on PKSK nine. We just put him on that new, very expensive alternative drug that lowers his LDL but has no effect on the muscle. Oh boy, that's a secret. You're, so you're talking about that one. We've been hinting at that one for a while. We're going to talk about that one day. Okay. So 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 so. You can you can microdose, and then in the end, the old classic way is you take a you take anti-estrogens, and mostly most commonly it's aromatase inhibitors, yeah. and it's it's mainly it's not the suicide type. This is insane stuff. It, that stuff is just powerful. It's it's either uh, it's arimidex or letrozole. And again, we could talk until I'm blue in the face. I want to get a fight going. I want to get all the comments. Let's go. I mean, tell me I'm a douchebag. Say Ron's a douchebag. L let me see what you're doing. Let's see. So, but here's why that guy wrote that. Because me and a bunch of other doctors that are not anti-aging doctors, I don't see them as real doctors. I'm, I'll, I'll stop. I should, sh I should shut up because I'm making a lot of money on that. Oh, okay. So, 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 the, the, you know you love me. So the truth is, if you look at it, you, 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 a guy has a little bit of estrogen in the bloodstream. He's got more testosterone, obviously, mostly. And how do you feel? 
they feel fine. So, so, and is it, is it cardioprotective? We don't know. It's ridiculous. So we start addressing the other medical issues apart from that. And if you're not on too much testosterone, giving aromatase inhibitors are going to hurt the HDL in every guy's case. I want to see a case that it doesn't. I don't say it's going to cause heart disease, but you're taking a risk. It, long term, if you have no estrogen, I'm not saying you, you're devastating. If you, if you take so much of the stuff, I use aromatase inhibitors on guys still. Yeah. I use them sparingly. So if you, keep so if you take estrogen completely out, you're going you're, you're gonna to cause osteopenia or porosis on the guy's bones. Over That's going to take years. I've never seen this case. It's, it's, the, the, the doctors, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of general practitioners around the country that are prescribing their, their male patients TRT. Um, do, do you know offhand if it's standard for them to just automatically prescribe an AI along with that? Yes, I do, yes, I do know offhand. Hmm. They don't. Oh, they don't. Good, good. Oh, good. no, no. They, they, but the thing is, there's no data, people. There's no clinical evidence. And, don't, and I'm not in bed with any drug company. I'm in bed with my patients for crying out loud. There, there, there's no, we need to look at studies. A hundred years from now, we're going to look back at this time and go, like, we're a bunch of buffoons. We, we need to understand a randomized double-blinded trial with or without estrogen blockers. Am I right or wrong, Ron? Yeah, I mean, there's, every week we, you talk about these studies that need to be done. And good Lord, we must have you about 500 of them by, right now that they need to be done. You know why they're not done? <laughs> Two reasons we're not done. Two reasons. Number one, there's no money. No one's going to make money on it that they could foreseeably see. Right. Number one. And number two, no one gives a shit. Two valid reasons. Okay, let's move on. Hey, Ron, I have a uh, Q&A. For guys predisposed to androgenic alopecia, would a testosterone cycle with finasteride be as good or close to as good as a testosterone-only cycle? Also following up on the Decadic video. Well, let's do this one at a time. So he's pre predisposed to androgenic alopecia, which is just complete... That'd be hair loss from everywhere, right? Not just it's, it, it, it's male pattern balling, oh, and it's okay. it's classically the sides, and it's the apex. Okay, gotcha. So would a testosterone cycle with finasteride be a good idea, I guess is what he's asking. Okay, it's not a good idea, but men do it, and it does slow the hair loss down. Why is it not a good idea? It, 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 for even, for even when you use testosterone, you are blocking DHT, and some men their brain is so sensitive that they're taking testosterone because they like to have a good libido. Okay. At least that's part of it, right? For me. Sure. So my, my men, there's, there's not, you know, the muscle building is in there, but it's, it's fifth on the list. I mean, it's not number one. So, and they've, they, they, they take it and they've experimented on themselves and they've done, you know, doc, I take, I take dutasteride. I, they take finasteride and award dutasteride, which is a smaller one. And they, they've told me, Again, it would be an interesting real study, but I have tons of anecdotal case reports, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands, where they say it ain't, it's not worth it because even little, even when I knock my DHT down a little bit, doc, and I try to measure it, and I, I do this for them. So they, they say, you know what? I don't know, man. It, even that little bit of dose, who cares about the hair? Because my sex drive is definitely affected. Hmm. So Done. Keep a little bit more hair, but you lose your libido. Mm. So, but not, but Ron, I have guys, you know, this is for all you guys listening, so you don't have to throw stones and beat me up too much. I have guys that go fooey on you. I take just the right amount of DHT blocker with either dutasteride or finasteride. I do it, and, and I feel great. Now, hold on a minute, sir. I'm not arguing you. <laughs> do it. But most men yeah. don't do it. They don't because it just it, it it does affect the sex drive even a little bit, a little. So every time there's somebody who's like an exception to the rule, they get so outraged that we're saying this is what happens to most people. Well, it didn't happen to me. That's Ron, my experience. Well, yes, Ron, you're the one in you're the one in a hundred. Thank you for this. This is this is not evidence. This is we're trying to. This is a talk show on what this doctor sees is my full time job. And I've been doing it for well over 10 years. And we're just telling the truth. And I'm just telling you the bottom line of what the most common thing that I see. There's always going to be atypical. There's going to be, I've seen guys have great sex on DECA by itself. We talked about that. That's coming up. Hang on. Well, let me finish the second part of this question. Uh, 
getting back to the Decadic video, which that's, that's going to be one of your legendary videos. Uh, <laughs> would adding finasteride to DECA be a bad idea for guys for potential hair loss issues due to greater androgenic effects, causing androgenic alopecia to go into effect? So would it be a bad idea to add finasteride to DECA uh, for your hairline? Yes. Okay. So in the only case, this is like a, these, these crazy K type questions, like the multiple choice. Is it, is it A and above? Is it C plus B, but not D? So the, the, I remember when in med school, we had some of those at the end. Woo! K, they're called K type or something, and they're just impossible to, to you got to really pull your brain out for that. So, so your, your, your decadrobalin is going to aromatize to a, a less androgenic agent versus other drugs and testosterone that aromat excuse me, wrong word, that converts to 5-alpha reductase, it goes to a DHT, so it metabolizes, excuse me, I, I used the wrong, aromatizer that we were, I have to shift from estrogen to DHT. It's shifting from a androgen to a more potent androgen, and that's because of 5-alpha reductase, and that's the DHT blocks that. It's a DHT blocker, so it's dihydrotestosterone. It converts dihydrotestosterone, which we make some steroids from, is, is going to be more male paulding, more sexual, but, and not to mention, over time, those receptors get downregulated. So decadrobin, which I learned when I was presenting these videos, because I did all my research, even really with the pharmacokinetics, is that the problem with one of the reasons why decadic happens is because it's converting to a less potent so if you use a DHT blocker, you're going to slow that. You're going to slow that that conversion down. So the parent compound, which is more androgenic in this rare case, hmm. is going to be more prevalent. So therefore, if you use a DHT blocker, you're going to actually you're going to actually protect against converting to going to more androgenic. So it does the opposite effect. And I remember reading. So it does the opposite effect what a DHT blocker does with testosterone. Huh. Does, answer, is it confusing? So the truth is, yes, if you, if you use DECA and you use DHT blocker, you're going to have better hair. Okay. You're, you're going to have, no, no, you're going to have worse, you'll have worse hair loss. Worse hair loss. Worse, worse hair, hair loss. Okay. But, but no one, that's right. So it's hard for me. It's been a long day. But the truth is no one does no, no, no one's doing DECA and DHT blockers. Oh, Ron, who does this? Somebody must be. <laughs> Somebody must be. Okay, now, uh, do you have a snack? Because this, this next question is going to take a while, so sit back, enjoy a little popcorn. Where's my, where's my poodle? Yeah, you had the poodle. Uh, a guy named Luke J. a week ago. So this was uh, in response to our the video that I did with you about DECA, where I think I called anyone who, I said anyone who does DECA only is stupid, and yeah, okay. Well, this is the reaction, the response to that. He says, if I may comment on this video, very offensive and slightly ignorant, I'm part of big DECA only group of people who actually knows more regarding to this subject than these two gentlemen in the video. Doctor here never tried this on his own as well as Mr. O'Connor. Uh, did he just call me a doctor? Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Sir, I did not go to not even one day of pre-med. So no, I'm not. Okay, so he says, yet they call us dumb. You have no idea how dumb you sound to all of us who actually run DECA only cycles. The entire secret of success is to not combine testosterone with DECA. DECA will amplify all testosterone-based sides. Therefore, you need to use DECA solo, no less than, he didn't put the amount of weeks, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, no less than 600 milligrams a week, so that's a minimum, to create enough estradiol and strong enough andro response. DECA cycle for six weeks, then two weeks off to lower myostatin, and another cycle for six weeks for another nice gains. This protocol brings no sides, no gyno, no decadic, nothing. No need for any AIs either. Libido high, erections like 16 years old, great overall healthy feeling and good mood. First, try this on your own before you start spewing crap like this to the public. Do you guys really think that golden ear boys like Arnold and others are using tests like these days? This guy's, so English is not his first language, I'm guessing. This guy's were running DECA only or DECA and Debo. Do you think they had gyno issues or running with flaccid dicks around? Yeah, I didn't think so. Oof. So I now have an extra a-hole because he just tore me in a new a-hole. Uh, I don't know about you, but... Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, what is the response to that rant? Here's a, here's a deal because I'm, you know, you know, I'm not a politically correct guy. This guy is out, this guy is out there. Yeah. Who the hell 
how many DECA, I've heard of these DECA only guys. You know what? You think you're going to run, let me talk for the, for the, for the world. These, no, I'm not, 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 I'm not, Ron, I'm sorry. It's been a long day. I'm talking to the guys. I'm talking, not to Ron, I'm talking to these, the, you guys. Yeah. Who the hell thinks, you, you know you're laughing, Ron. Who the hell is going to take DECA only good luck? Because I've seen more p patients than you, sir. You don't, DECA only, Ron? That's insane. And can you do it once or twice? And are you young? Are you, you're going to be flaccid. And are, are, are these, these group of guys that are going to continue to do, th these are outliers. And you know what? Am I saying it's not true? I don't know. I'm saying that the numbers are not big. No one, no one does this, Ron. And I, I, I've looked at a lot of the old school cycles and got, I've talked to some of these guys. Uh, you know, I haven't talked to like Arnold or the top guys, but you know, when I was younger, I used to tr try to get as much knowledge as I could from these older guys from that era. And they would give me, they would tell me what they took for cycles. And I never heard of DECA only. It was always like D-ball, DECA, they like the Prima Ball in. Of course. It was, it was just like, you could count all the drugs they used back then on one hand. But I never heard one, of, not one of those men ever told me DECA was there. They just did DECA. I've seen hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of men that have done DECA by itself. Hmm. And the proportion of those men that have DECA dick is great. Hmm. Very large. So the, these, first of all, that just that was just an excuse just to get. So you got some airtime, buddy. You got some airtime. You know, but that's ridiculous. Well, no. What about this? Uh, what about this uh, statement where? And go ahead and Gron, go ahead and use it. God bless you. Very, it's that. it's very interesting. But I don't want it to get out there. This is a show of evidence and goodness. And I don't want any guys out. Oh, let me see. I'll be one of these guys and do DECA only because chances are, if you do, you're going to suffer. So who 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 are these deco only guys? Well, it's, it's a big big group. I don't know if they're. I'm not sure how big they are. Uh, <laughs> but but what about his claim that the, the secret is to not combine it with testosterone because it will amplify all the side effects of testosterone? So that's that doesn't even make any sense because guys have been taking tests in deca on the specified ratios as we all know yeah. for years upon decades and. During those circumstances, you can still get deca dick, yeah. but it, you're probably not going to get deca dick if you take X amount of testosterone. And that's not bullshit. That's real scientific proof. I mean, that guys take deca and test all the time together. And then if a guy runs out of test or he just decides to run deca by itself, <laughs> it's called deca dick. Well, not for everyone, but I mean, come on, Ron. As a uh, as a gear user, I can tell you the one thing I never ever run out of is test. I can, I, can base. Go, I can go months and months and months without buying DECA or anything else, but I can't run out of tests because, you know, I'm on self-administered TRT. Uh, let, let's get into uh, a question, a more positive question, someone that actually wants some, some answers. Hey, Doc, love the content. Thank you for it. That's a crazy bench press you have there, brother, B-R-U-T-H-A. Not many men can. Quick question, if I may. Short versus long esters and side effects like water tension. Do you think the bros are right about short esters having less sides or the bros such as myself in believing it's the act of frequent injections giving less sides? Thank you if you can add some science, yet no worries if you're busy. Keep doing what you do. So awesome. short versus long esters and side effects. Okay, so ester, so testosterone esters, which there are many, but the three... That was, your, that was your video that I did not steal this week. I do appreciate. I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it. But I love you. I love you working this stuff because it's it's really incredible. So testosterone esters, what we did in the night, what they did and the scientists did in the fifties and sixties is they wanted to slow down so you don't have to inject like you know suspension every twice a week or actually like twice a day, right? Because yeah. I, I found out the suspension actually is not like every day. It was actually about two or three times a week. But I can imagine it was just horrible. So. In the end, suspension we know is a very short half-life, so it's it is best doing it like once a day or twice a day. So it's painful, and we all know it doesn't. No one's really doing it anymore. But so they decided to make it aqueous. They would make it fatty, so the oil and water properties. They made it more oily, so when it goes into the muscle, it basically it it, it leaches into the circulation at a slower rate. And the scientists to do that. They esterified the ring of testosterone. It's very simple. And then the, the ester is a fatty tail. 
So propanate versus enanthate versus sipanate, it, the fatty tail is different. Yeah. And the fatty tail, the fatty tail is what gives that half-life kinetic property. Now, here's the secret. And I learned all this stuff from guys like Bill Llewellyn and all the steroid, the, the many patients that are, I'm so impressed that, that they, they know so much more than me on steroids in the streets. I learned from them is that they, that it's the, the chemical property of how it degrades and how it gets into the circulation is the esters, enanthate, sipanate, propanate. Once it's cleaved and it's launched into the free testosterone, yep. you're, 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 you're then going to get to the point of what your genetics are for how it converts into estrogen, aromatization, genetics, how much water you're on board, how much your genetics will convert, aroma. There it is. So there's the question, guys. It depends on the ester. So the short-acting esters, you could use smaller doses because they're going to liberate quicker like propanate. So you use smaller amounts, and therefore it's not going to overload into the system. And it does, in theory, like the microdosing, yeah. it will lead to less aromatization. We're, I it just answered. The, I finally answered the question simply. Hmm. That's yeah. it. So I mean, that's, that's it. A big takeaway. I think we're getting a. Uh, if you if you guys really want to avoid a lot of the ester esterification, aromatization. Yeah. You, you would do these smaller doses every day. It's just microdosing, and I, it does work. And then if you have less estrogen, you have you know less water gain. But so, some guys get even water gain with with non aromatizable drugs. I mean, this is so much genetics, Ron. It's so much your diet. It's so much. It, there's so many other factors involved. But that that's the real science behind why certain esters are longer acting because they just leach longer, and the way your body cleaves it. But the delivery into the muscle and how it's going to be sit there for how long, that's based on the ester. So it is true that if you have a shorter acting ester and you can use a little smaller dose, it's going to come out more rapidly. You use smaller, it may aromatize less. But that, that's the microdosing. But people microdose mainly with sipanate and enanthate. Some guys do microdose with propanate. That's because they think it's a half, shorter half-life, teeny doses. We do a teeny dose every day, so it's better to do propanate. I've seen guys use propanate, enanthate, and sipanate for years. We keep checking the labs yeah. and, and the estrogen levels, and it's, it's, it can be all over the board. I see, dose, I see enanthate and sipanate to be just as good on microdosing than propanate, so I don't see a difference. Hmm. Now what about like, you know, that we don't use it here in the U.S., but that testosterone undequinate, undecanoate? Yeah. Undecanoate. I mean, they're giving these massive doses like once every, what, six months to these guys over there? So, so once every three months, it's, it's, a, it's, every, it's, every, it's, it's actually marketed with, in the back of the magazine, I remember seeing, take a testosterone shot every season, and he's got a picture of the guy. Boy, boy. He's, he, he's, in, he's, in, he's on the ski slopes in Italy. That's winter. No, listen, listen winter, that's winter picture. Then he's in France smelling the roses in spring. Okay. Then he's in like Bavaria. No, Bavaria was for the fall. And then he's in like uh, southern Italy and Rome in the summer. And it's what a brilliant uh, commercial that was. And that's testosterone on decanate. It's called Nibido. We have it in this country. It's I don't. It's called another. Uh, it's a brand name. No one uses it though because the concern is you have to give a huge dose in America. It's seven hundred fifty milligrams at once, and there it's a it's a gram. Ooh. And the the danger is. It's got a black box warning on, or an increased risk warning. I'm not sure it's a black box warning. It's a high warning risk for the skull, Fed. A skull and crossbones. Yeah. It's, it's a skull and crossbones saying that you can get a pulmonary, an oil, a pulmonary oil embolus, and you can die because it, it's so much. If it goes into the capillary bed or, excuse me, the venous bed, it will launch off in these venules. It will, it will co coagulate, and it could send itself all the way up up into your uh, your lung and cause a pulmonary embolism. And I was reading the insert literature on it a couple of years ago, and it it happened. I was like, wow. I don't know what this is. Assuming it's 200 mg per mil? I'm, a, I'm just taking a guess here. No, no it's, 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 a, it's 750. No, wait, wait. No, no, no. It's three milliliters injected, oh, okay. so it's about 300 milliliters per mil. That's, see, see, they can concentrate. This is for the bro science, guys. They can concentrate. You ever see like test 400, test 300, test 200? There's always an argument, and I wish someone would help me with this, a scientist, a, a chemical scientist. 
Like, how much can you concentrate? And these are the questions, Ron. These are why this show, this is why it's a cool show. So it's like we just are in your face and we get crazy. At least I do. And you know. So, but the truth is that Esther is so long acting. The half life is months, weeks. To it's like so versus like like suspension is hours. Right literally like 18 hours or something or less. And then this one is six week half-life or, th or maybe a four week half-life. How, so, how lazy can you get? You know what though, but I've seen guys, cause I have tons of guys all over Europe and the world and they've taken some of the, you know, these are just regular TRT guys, you know? So, and, and I, I go, how is it? And they go, you know, in the beginning, these are just regular guys that had low T and they just went, in the beginning, Doc, it seems like anything will work. Gel makes you feel, anything make you feel better. And then it's over years, they, they just lose the effect. And then in the end, there's no, I would give all the secrets away right here. There's no better way. You know, men, men, once you're on TRT, taking small doses of sipinate or enanthate, balancing it, yeah, sometimes looking at the estrogen and all these things, making sure you don't have a heart attack or prostate issues and the hair loss and the gyno and the mood, there's nothing better. It's so simple, Ron. You know, I gotta, I gotta interject here because in the, in the comment section of your last video on testosterone, go read one of the top comments was a guy saying, the doc seems to really have it, he's, he's really coming down hard on guys, on men on TRT or HRT. He seems to like, he seems to have no problem with teenagers shooting mega doses. What the thinking, fuck? Uh, are you commenting on someone the wrong video or the wrong channel? Do you, have you ever listened to Dr. O'Connor speak? I mean, I saw. I actually had to say something on that. I said he he's got a ton of patients on TRT. So thanks. I saw that, Rod. Right. Talking out your ass. Next question, because uh, we've talked about antidepressants and libido a few times now. So uh, someone called Simon said, "Hello, Thomas. After taking antidepressant, I have no libido. I suspect it's because it messed up my test and DHT. So now." I'm going to administer high doses of test and DHT. What do you think of this approach? So, so to antidepressants cause cause poor libidos. You know why? No, it no. it, it receptors so, or yeah, yeah yeah. So so they they manipulate serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Not to mention other neurotransmitters, and not to mention these are men, unfortunately, that are depressed. That's why they're on antidepressants. Right. So. As a primary care doctor for, I don't know, 15 years, which I really don't do it anymore, but I learned a lot, is that, you know, most men take these medicines and it's like, I'm depressed. Now they're worsening my sex drive. How's that going to make me feel better? But just giving testosterone to this guy that we don't know if he has low T or needs T, that's not going to, that's not the answer. Seems like it's worth a shot. <laughs> I, it could be worth a shot. But so... Antidepressants manipulate br the brain tr neurotransmitters in your deep brain, not to mention the cerebral hemisphere, so you feel better, mainly the animal brain. And they feel, and you're right though, it's more serotonin. And is something about serotonin and the prolactin and the progestins that when you manipulate those and you increase, for an example, serotonin levels in that core deep animal brain, people feel better. But at the cost of a libido, it is true. And, and the, 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 the psychiatrists know this and it's trading off. You know, it's a trade, it's all a trade off. I mean, if I was in this gentleman's position, I would do the same thing. I would think, well, if my libido has gone, why don't I just do some sip? You know, a little so, sip. So, so I have a lot of guys that are, again, more the TRT guys more, but some steroid users. I have obviously hundreds, I've seen thousands of men. I have a lot of men, a lot, that have depression because people just have depression. Some mild, moderate, some very severe. And they end up finding a balance with antidepressants and testosterone. And, Ron, it's a beautiful life. So do most of these patients of yours, do they end up lowering their antidepressant dose? You know what? A guy who I just saw today, I took, you know, I saw two new guys today. And the last man is on five milligrams. I just saw him an hour ago, so I remember all the details, right? Mm -hmm. After a while, I forgot. I have to write things down. That's why I have a computer. Yeah. He's on five milligrams of Lexapro. And we talked about, you know, I spent 90 minutes with him, and I really got to know him. And he said, Doc, you know, I've been kind of self-treating with the low-dose steroids for a couple of years. I've been on and off the antidepressants for years. And it seems like when I go, when I go on testosterone, I don't need – 
my low dose Lexapro. Wow. Mm. So he now is at a point where he's not a steroid user, but he was using testosterone like millions and millions of men are just because he was curious. And then when he did it a couple of years ago, he felt so freaking good yeah. that now he's at a point where his testosterone was low. He's been off for a few months and it's not coming back. And I tell, I gave him the spiel that you could wait, come back, wait a whole year, or maybe we can use a little bit of some of the PCT, which is, you know, the HCG. And I don't like Clomid for him. And he saw that video on Clomid and depression. Mm -hmm. he, he loved, he lo loved that. So we decided to give him, uh, he has low T. I mean, his, his, his he's, he's super low on paper. His, it's interesting that he had low T and he had his, 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 uh, LH and FSH was also low, and this was probably months and months after, I've seen two of these cases actually in this week, where months later, you should have an elevated uh, gonadotropin re response because your T is low. And, and it, you, you don't because you, the, you, you don't see it because after years and years of going on and off, even testosterone, the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus gets blunted well, I'm this is the dat Ron. It's really exciting. I mean, it's not exciting for the guy, but when you put when you put him on testosterone, they feel good. You have to. You have to. You can't. I don't. I don't do it easily. I always try to push him back, push him back, and I say because if you go on, you're going to be on forever, bro, ever. And that's like so. Well, well, let's talk about that. What are the side effects? I go for the hair, the puffiness, the gyno, the heart, the prostate. I do the same thing over and over. So. But it's amazing that testosterone for, for a lot of depressed men, now PTSD guys that are back in the war and military guys, yeah. holy moly, testosterone seems to really help them a lot. Mm. And, and one, I, of the, one of the symptoms, the major symptoms of low T is depression, right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable depression. Is that dog trying to bust in again? What's going on? Yeah, that's the kid. Okay, kid, get over there. Tell me almost over. He has to give me a kiss. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. He, all right, Junior. Okay, Junior. I call all, I call all male children Junior. <laughs> uh, last question. Oh. Doc, I've seen your video on uh, Nandrolone Decanoate, DECA. I have a lot of tendinitis. Please try to respond. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, well, that's what we're doing. Do doctors still des describe, it's prescribed, do doctors still prescribe DECA for tendinitis? I read the study on U.S. Medicine of Health where when, how many milligrams for how long. Okay, so he's proposing 100 milligrams, I guess that's a week, for 12 weeks of DECA for tendinitis. Uh, I don't know, is that a, is, I know that's off-label, obviously, but would it work? Here's a deal, it's, it's off-label. The anti-aging guys throw it in there, obviously, as, you, as we all know. Okay, DECA Durabilin helps the joints and the shoulders. Remember, I talked about it in the video, I had to ask Dr. T this stuff, and he came back very eloquently in, on why. It seems that it does do something to lubricate and increase the water in the in, in those synovial joints, and it incre it helps at least temporarily with the with the uh, the collagen synthesis cross you know the 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 the, the cross sectional dimension the the, the the density it it, it thickens to that and it, it it provides a healthiness to that, but for a limited period. And, and then in the end, if you keep doing it, these, the anabolic side of it, and androgenic anabolic side, is paradoxic tendon rupture. Ugh, I, we don't run. We don't, again, we don't. But DECA helps my shoulders. Great. I mean, I, I've seen – we don't understand why, but the problem is it will help. In the, there's no question. Yeah. It will help. DECA drop one with or without test, please, DECA. Do, use a little bit of – actually, use two to one. Test it. It's not a recommendation. I can't remember recommendations. The world knows to use two to one ratio. But if you do, it seems like I've heard thousands of times that men will add decadrabalin and they feel their their joints, their backs, their joints markedly improved. But again, Ron, there's no double blinded study using an injectable oil like canola oil versus added with test or deca. You know, with with a real sham, with a with a placebo, there's no study. I think it's going to work. It will work, but over time, the guys that tell me there's nothing more valuable than my stories, they tell me 
they go, Doc, you know, you can't live on test and DECA forever, but guys do. You get bloated and hypertensive. It's going to affect your heart. So, but then again, they tell me, you know what? The shoulder pain comes comes back anyway. I mean, right, Ron? Am I right or wrong? Well, absolutely. Now, th this dose, uh, you know, I'm looking at 100 milligrams a week, and I'm nothing. That's not. I'm rolling my eyes. With in your in your opinion, would that have the effect that he's looking for? I don't know, but you know what? Though, on top of it, probably you know, probably not. It's a you need a much higher dose. Yeah, I would think like 400 400 milligrams a week minimum. Three to four hundred, yeah, three to four hundred. I mean, that's just what the streets tell me. Yeah, exactly. Well, Doc, I apologize for that blasting sun you had to look at the whole time. I should have pulled that window <laughs> shade. My bad. I'm a little disappointed your poodle didn't stay for the whole show. I was hoping he would contribute uh, here and there. You know, when he had farting. Something. He's farting. Him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, uh, it's good to be back after a little hiatus there for last week's Arnold. And uh, also, want to let you know, Doctor T. He's getting his own show. Starts next That's week. Fun. Ask Dr. Testosterone. And oh, he is pumped. Wow. He is pumped. Oh, yeah. it's going to be, this is going to be. It's going to be insane. It's yeah. going to be insane. Boy, you guys <laughs> thought I was bad. This is a savant. This um, guy's coming at you. I don't know if I got enough storage space on the computer for his answers. Oh, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be great. Conference. Awesome. The comments are going to be better. I mean, it's going to be a good show. I'm excited for this. Well, he will write, like, you know, a paragraph response to every comment. He's, I he's, can't. So the, guy, the guy's intense, Ron. He trains his ass off. He sends me training clips. He's jacked. He looks good. So, I mean. Man, good-looking Greek man. Dr. O'Connor, Dr. Tulliano. So what, what more could I ask for? This is, this is great. Got it, man. We got one guy trying to keep you healthy and living to be 110. <laughs> so another guy is going to help you get huge. I, I don't know. I, I don't know his stance on how long he wants to live or he wants. I don't know. I will, I'll find out all about that. But uh, it's just it's going to be a nice contrast. Ron, look, look. Oh, look. there he is. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. O'Connor. I want to remind everybody where did I put the book? Check out the doctor's websites, metabolicdoc.com, anabolicdoc.com. Get the book, America on Steroids, available on those sites or amazon.com. And for much, much more informative videos that are laid out with a table of contents at the beginning and everything, go to Anabolic Doc channel, Anabolic Doc on YouTube. He's making some crazy informative videos lately. Uh, are you ready for this? Yeah. Monday night, Equipoise. Oh, no. <laughs> I know it's every time you make one of these steroid videos, 99% of the comments are, can you do, do this one, do that one, do that one. So you've got like your next 20, 30 videos waiting to go. Equipoise. Echo Boy Junior. Junior doesn't know that I can. Only, this is only recording this part of the screen. We can't see his hand trying to wave and screw up, screw it up. Unless he jumps in there and does that behind your head. But uh, yep. Doc, uh -oh. thank you so much again for taking the time. As always, you're doing a great service to the uh, the men of the world, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. All men in the world, I thank you, Doctor. I do appreciate it, Ron. Thank you, and thanks to your boss. Thanks to Muscular Development. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Ask the Anabolic Doc. We'll see you next time.